Hey, what is up everyone, Norman from Future Studio University here, and welcome to another video in our Redford series. After looking at basic and token authentication in the last two videos, we will explore OAuth authentication in this video. In particular, we will look at the theory a little bit and explain why OAuth is partly better than the other two, and then implement an example app with GitHub and go through the entire flow of OAuth. Token and basic authentication are usually used when you're developing your own service, your own API. If you develop a backend and you develop exactly one Android app which talks to that backend, the token authentication is probably just fine. For large APIs which are available to everyone, usually go with OAuth. For example, if you remember the early days of Twitter, Twitter didn't really have their own good app, so a lot of other Android developers developed their Android apps. In order to implement a Twitter app, as a Android developer, you need to register your app. You need to basically get access to the API. And so the first step in OAuth is always registering yourself an app at their service. So you go to their website, you read the developer docs, and you create a new app. The rest of the video will always be with GitHub. So we will look at that in a second. But basically you get two important information. First, you get the client ID, and second, you get the client secret. Both of them are important for you to later then access information from that service. And the third configuration you need to set is the callback URL, which I will come back to in a second. After you have registered the app and you got the client ID and the client secret, you can actually start implementing your app. Let's switch to the user perspective. So if the user installs and opens your app, and he needs to log in to that service because he wants to request his data, his Twitter feed, his GitHub repositories, and not from someone else. So he needs to log in with his account. In token and basic authentication, you would ask for email and password, and then use that to get access to the backend. But with OAuth, you never handle that. What you do is you open a website from that service, and the user enters his login information there. So you don't handle the email and the password that's all on the website of that of that service. It's a little bit more secure just because you as the app developer never have to deal with the sensitive information of passwords. It's all on the GitHub or Twitter on the OAuth provider. Once you have directed the user to that website, he logs in just like he usually does on the website with his information. And then he gets the second screen where your app, which you have registered with your client ID and client secret, and he gets information that, okay, this app wants to access this kind of information. Do you agree or not? So basically the user gets one more confirmation. Hey, someone wants to access your private data. Are you okay with that? And if they agree, the provider creates a special token. That, that token needs to be directed back to you. And that's what the callback URL is for. If the user permitted access, the app needs to be informed that everything worked. And the app is calling that callback URL. So for example, that could be a web page, just redirecting you back to the web page you're coming from. Now, obviously, since you're working in an Android app, you can't redirect to a web page. But that's the technical detail we will figure out in a minute when we actually develop the Android app. The callback comes with an authorization token. And the token just tells you, hey, the authorization, so the login and the um, request permission, everything worked. And now you can use that authorization token to get an actual access token. Only with the access token, you can do all further requests, like request repositories or send tweets or whatever that OAuth provider does. Based on the process, you probably have already seen some advantages. First of all, the OAuth provider not only knows which user is accessing that API right now, it's also through which app is he doing it. So for example, Twitter limits the users per app to 100,000, and it's only possible to do that if you actually can identify the app. Now the second advantage is that you as the app developer don't have to deal with the sensitive information of passwords. Everything goes on their website, you just get the token back, and you don't have to worry about that. The third advantage is since we can identify apps, the user can revoke access on app basis. So if the user has three Twitter clients and the third isn't any good anymore, he can simply revoke access to that one client, to that one app, and the other two will still work. Before we get started, you should know that you can find the content as a tutorial on our website. It's the first link in the description below. You can also find the 
video tutorials on token and basically authentication also in the description below. We will jump into Android Studio in a second, but here you see that I registered a new OAuth application under my user account and I just called it Future Studio Retrofit Tutorial. And here we have that client ID and client secret, which are the secret tokens to access um, data with our user data background. And we can fill out some application stuff, which is not really necessary right now. And the important part down here is the callback URL. And we need to remember that because we need to use it in a few minutes. And the second tab I have open here is the uh, documentation on the OAuth process on GitHub. So you can find that right here. All right, welcome to Android Studio. If you remember in the very first retrofit tutorial, we've also used GitHub as an example for API access, but we have used a publicly available endpoint. So we could access data um, without doing all this user and authorization stuff. So we have just shown a public GitHub repository and that was it. Let's go a step further and actually implement the OAuth process. So first of all, let's copy and paste the information we saw on that website. So specifically the client ID, the client secret, and the redirect URL. Now let's remove this show public GitHub repository and instead call that special website where the user can log in. So what we now need to do is open that website. And we can do that with an intent. And the second um, parameter is the URL. And we will need to look up that URL. Let's go back to the documentation and already right here you can find that special URL which we need to call. So let's copy and paste that and add it right here. Now if you just open the website, GitHub won't have any idea who's calling it. And so what we need to do is we need to add the client ID as the information to GitHub. Hey, this is the app which is I'm trying to access this data. So let's add a query parameter. So a question mark. And then it's our client ID. And let's add the client ID we have already added. While authentication is the standard, it can change on service level. So some providers might use something different and have slightly different details. One detail for GitHub is that you can supply a scope. So you not only request access to all of the data, you can say, hey, I only want this part of data. So in this example, um, they call it scope. And the scope is going to be repo, so repositories. We don't want anything else. We just want the information to the repositories. So our app will only get access to repositories, nothing else. So we have the client ID, we have what we want to access, and lastly, usually also adds redirect UI. So if I know how to spell, it should be this. And then we have all the video to find it up there, so we can just use the parameter. Okay, now this looks really long, but basically we're just opening this website with the query parameter client ID, with the scope parameter repo, in the redirect UI, um, which we are already defined. Now we need to use that intent and we just do start activity and supply that intent. What we expect is when we open the app, a small browser window will open with the GitHub page. And on that GitHub page, the user can log in and then accept the, the app's request to accessing the data. So let's try this out. Okay, as expected, the browser window opens and we need to sign into GitHub. So let me do that really quickly. I have two-factor authentication turned on. So let me just quickly check that message. Oh, 
on the next screen, you see the app, so the Future Studio Retro tutorial. You see the developer, and you see that we want to access the repositories. And finally, you see some information about the organization and stuff. Okay, we will authorize the application. And now it will redirect to the app, but the app can't handle it yet. So the app crashed. At this point, we can send the user to the GitHub page, but we need to catch the callback. When GitHub is sending the authorization token back, we need to catch that. And we can do that by going into the Android manifest, and this is our activity, and we need to add another intent filter. And I will just copy and paste it. Well, it's basically catching a view, so the browser is sending us a view back, and we say it's a browsable one, and here's that callback Future Studio. So here we have defined Future Studio callback, so that means the scheme is Future Studio and the host is callback. Now you could define anything else, which might, uh, which might look a little different. It really depends on the scenario. But what this means is when this Future Studio callback URL is opened, the app can catch that and say, hey, don't open the browser, open me. And we would expect that the callback comes in back to the activity. We are going to Use the unresume for now. In the unresume, we want to access a token. So first of all, let's check what we got. So we will check the intent, the incoming intent, and then get the data of that intent. And if the URI is none now, you will display a toast. Let's go one step further and actually set a debug breakpoint too. And let's start again. Now, if you're wondering, hey, why didn't the browser window open? Well, think about it this way. The browser would open again, and I'm still logged in, so I don't need to log in again, since the browser probably has some kind of cookie, and it remembers me. We've already, already granted access for our application, so that doesn't need to be done again. So what GitHub does is just redirect those right away back to the app. And we can see here now that we have the um, callback, so, so future do callback, and we additionally get a query which contains the code or the authorization um, token. So we need to catch that authorization code, so we need to get it out of there, and then with that authorization token, we can get the access token to actually do requests for repositories. So let's stop the debugging here. So let's extend this part. Just to make sure we are um, not just randomly doing this with any open app intent. We're going to check if the URI actually starts with our callback URL. So, and if it actually starts with it, then we can go into our logic. So the next step is to get that code or authorization token from that URI. And there's a neat method for that which is get query parameter. And we already have seen the query parameter is called code. And whatever the value is, is now in the string variable code. As I've mentioned earlier, the next step would be to use that code and get the access token. So we would actually do a retrovert request now. So we then will describe a new endpoint in our GitHub client. So this was our old one from the very first retrofit video. So let's add a second one to it. Okay, so this request is a post request since we are sending data. And you can look up the, the documentation that's going to be under login, OAuth, and access token. Now the return type is going to be from our 
class access token, which we will write in a second. And we will call this get access token. GitHub usually accepts various ways of uh, sending data. Um, in this case, we will use the form URL encoded way. Um, if you don't know form URL encoded, we have done a separate video on that. You can check that out as well. But we want to send three information. We want to see send the field, which is the client ID. We want to send our secret. And we want to send that code we have just gotten. Now with these three information, we can use that code we just got and turn it into a useful access token. What this also means, if someone somehow gets access to that code, he can't use this until he also knows your client ID and client secret. So this is an extra layer of security here. And let's create that access token class. Actually, I want an in model. If you look up the documentation, it has mainly two properties. One is the access token, and the other one is the token type. Now let's make that a proper class. And let's create together for it. And one of the unfortunate things is that GitHub sends it as a pretty wacky format. So it uses the underscore formatation. So what we're going to change is the serialized name and say this is not access token written this way, it's access token with the underscore in between it. So the JSON we receive has this kind of denotation instead of this. And so JSON can do the mapping automatically. We will just say, hey, this is a serialized name. And the same is valid for the token type. Okay, so we have that done. We need to get rid of this part. And then this method looks pretty good. Now one problem we would have when we're using this is we're sending data form URL encoded and we get back as some wacky format which we can't really use. So what we want to do is, hey GitHub, this is our data, but please send a JSON response back. And we can do that by sending a special header. And that header is an accept header. And as you know, with Retrofit, you can add the and can add a new header with the headers annotation. So we will use accept, and then we say application JSON. And what this means is when we execute that request, retrofit will add this header to the request. GitHub will see that header and say, oh, okay, they want JSON. So they respond in JSON with data. And as you know, JSON is no problem for JSON and retrofit, and we get a nice Java object of access token with information back. Perfect. Okay, let's go back to our activity. And right here, need, we need to do our retrofit stuff. So let's just copy and paste this for a second. And let's do it until here. Since you're still in that OAuth process, it's not actually API github.com, it's just github.com. And then log in as we have seen right up here. So let's change the base URL to just github.com instead of API github.com. Now the JSON factory is necessary since the response comes as JSON and we want to have our neat Java object. We create our retrofit object, that's good. And then we create a client from our GitHub client. Now we can use that client to use that get access token method. Okay, we've already have the variable for client ID, client secret, and the last one is a code we've just gotten too. Perfect. And this is going to be our access token call. And we're going to execute this access token call with our regular stuff. Oh, 
and we need to change this to main activity. Otherwise the reference is not correct. And let's add a debug breakpoint in both. So what happens is the app opens, we get redirected to the GitHub web page, and if the user logs in, or if he already is logged in, he will get redirected to our app. If it works out, we will catch that code. We will use that code to create a call to get the access token. And if everything works out, right here we will have the access token. So let's see. And we get the code to 100, so that means the request um, was successful. And in our body we have the access token, which is a barrel token, which is just kind of a keyword, which we'll then use for uh, the authorization header later. So we can use this access token to request any private data for that user, which we have the scope for. So we've requested the scope of repositories, so now we could access and display his private repositories, which is only visible to him. All right, let's review what we have seen in this tutorial. You have learned how to use GitHub as an example for OAuth, but it's very similar for all the other OAuth providers. You need to register yourself as an app developer, and then you can send the user to a special website, you need to catch the callback, and then you can use that authentication token or authorization token to get an access token. And with that access token, you can do all kinds of stuff with the API. Our example was GitHub specific. It might be a little bit different for the other services. You might not have the scope parameter, or we also didn't look at the state parameter, which makes it a little bit more secure, but the process is overall very similar. What we can do in the next video is we can use that access token to request private data from the user. That was it for this video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here. And if you've learned something, please give it a like. Also, subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. Enjoy coding and make it rock.